cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia is the only evidence-based long-term cure for chronic sleep problems. It has an incredibly high success rate. After two decades of insomnia, I can certainly be added to that list. The name, however, is a bit misleading because it is most certainly not therapy. When I work with clients, I don't unpick the trigger to their insomnia as the trigger doesn't matter. I also don't delve into their life to find out the stressors unique and specific to them because again, this doesn't matter. Everyone will go through stressful and distressing periods in their life and everyone will at some point experience a short-term sleep problem. But what turns a short-term sleep problem into long-term chronic insomnia is the behaviours people do afterwards that fragment the sleep drive and the resulting thought patterns that cause anxiety, obsession and worry around sleep that leads to the hyperarousal that can mask the sleep drive. And if everything I have just said sounds foreign to you, have a binge on all my other videos. There is no fixed standard to CBTI, but the way I do it is through a three-step process. Step one is re-education around sleep. It is common with insomniacs to have spent years trawling through the internet, learning about melatonin, supplements, nostril breathing, fixed bedtimes, caffeine, bedroom temperature, blah, 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 to have convinced themselves that they know everything there is to know about sleep. Unfortunately, with so much misinformation out there, a lot of what people know doesn't help overcome insomnia. It just feeds the anxiety and obsession around it. I help you become an expert on sleep, but an expert only on the things that matter, and I help you discard everything else. In step two, I work on very simple behavioral changes that build a strong regulated sleep drive. It's common with insomniacs to increase the amount of time they spend in bed because they become convinced that the longer they spend there, the greater chance there is of sleep happening. It's counterintuitive, but the opposite is true. All spending time in bed awake in an anxious, hyper-aroused state does is fragment the sleep drive and conditions the brain to see the bed as a place of worry and wakefulness. Step three works on tackling the anxiety and thought patterns around sleep. I'm guessing you've got 1001 things you have to do to make yourself sleep. I'm also guessing you have 1001 things you can't do in order to try and protect your sleep. Most insomniacs do. Normal sleepers, however, don't. So a large part of how I treat people with CBTI involves undoing all the obsessive ritualistic behaviors around sleep. As well as this, I also work on tackling the race in mind at night. That's the bare bones of how I treat people with CBTI. But if you really want to see how it's done so you can transform your own sleep with my eight week step-by-step -step video program, take a look at the links in the description. Did you know that Jennifer Aniston has talked openly about how she has suffered for years with chronic insomnia? If you'd like a real life example of how I'd use CBTI to transform her sleep, I'll see you on the next video.